Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Jan D and I am the Education U I am one of the Education USA advisors in Mexico City. Um, thanks everyone for be he being here on time. Um, today we're going to have uh, this online session on portfolio oh, preparation for our college applicants. Um, here with us today we have Chris McLaren, Assistant Director of International Recruitment. Uh, Michael Rossi, who's also uh, Assistant Director of International Enrollment, and Claudia, who is Admissions Counselor, and they all they um, they work at California College of the Arts. Uh, I'm going to ask you to please, everyone, um, mute your microphones and turn off your cameras. Um, at the end, if you have any questions, um, we will answer them but I will ask you to please type them on the chat box that is on the bottom of the screen. So um, I'm going to pass the time now to uh, our um, uh, speakers. Thank you. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to start off and just kind of give you an overview of what our uh, portfolio workshop will look like this evening. And thank you for joining us. Um, so the first part of the uh, workshop, we will um, go over portfolio, followed by some um, general um, information about California College of the Arts um, and art school admission and scholarships. And then we'll um, uh, end with questions and answers. Um, so um, just take note that um, while uh, Michael and I do not speak Spanish, Claudia is a Spanish speaking, so she can also answer your questions in Spanish if you prefer. So um, if you want to send along your questions in Spanish, they can be answered in Spanish. Um, so our objective for this workshop session is to um, introduce you to some general concepts to consider when you're putting together your portfolio. Uh, these guidelines are intended to be broad and non-specific to any particular school. So that said, students should definitely do the research into the schools that they're most interested in because different schools all have different requirements. Um, and to that end, I would encourage you to start reach, researching your options early. Uh, read and read, read the application guidelines and portfolio requirements for the different schools that you're most interested in so that you can begin to start tailoring your portfolio for you know, whatever school it is that you want to pursue. Uh, your art portfolio will have a big impact on your application to art school. So you want to really um, create that portfolio that best represents your skills, your perspective, your personality, um, anything you can do that can help to improve your chances of getting, gaining admission and also earning a scholarship to that art school. So let's dive in um, and look at some of the concepts that you'll want to consider when you're putting together your portfolio, starting with um, showcasing some of your technical skills. So many schools will ask you to demonstrate uh, some uh, technical skill um, and require observational drawing. So drawing is a real fundamental um, skill and for art schools that require um, observational drawing, what re reviewers are really looking for is how you can translate the weight and the shape and the movement of a three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional space. So um, observational or life drawing is the result of live um, and in-person looking um, and interpreting the world around you. So it really does take daily practice. Um, I encourage students to carry a sketchbook wherever they go, um, make it something that you um, carve out time every day, whether it's you know on the bus, coming home from school, um, drawing friends or family, um, looking out your window, um, make it part of uh, your practice and it will help to imp improve that technical skill that will then translate into your, uh, into your work. Uh, to that end, um, develop your craft. So um, whether it's sculpture, photo, or in this case, a student who was interested in graphic design, we want to see how you've developed your technique or your skill in 
in um, the medium that you're working with. So in this example, um, this student um, uh, showcased their experience with design software um, and they uh, created a series of work um, with creating a fictional uh, organization that was called the West Shore Shark Conservancy. And so it was um, something that was uh, uh, something that was meaningful to the student where they wanted to show uh, showcase their concern for the environment um, and uh, um, environment environmental issues but also showcase their uh, skill with the um, software so um, rather than just uh, um, rather than just uh, um, including a work from your yearbook layout you might want to Think about topics that are related to things that are of interest to you. Hi everyone, Claudia here. Um, I always tell students to experiment as much as possible. Uh, highlight a few different styles you've worked with, pick samples that demonstrate your creativity and experience. Um, it can be one medium or a range of mediums. Um, for instance, if you've done a lot of nature photography, take your camera to the streets. If your portfolio is mostly observational, start uh, pushing ideas over technique. Um, something that I always want students to consider is, um, you know, you don't have to use traditional art materials to create work. Uh, this student in, in particular, um, Enya, she didn't have the means to, uh, the financial means to afford, you know, canvas, uh, drawing paper. So she actually took cement blocks um, in her front yard and decided to make uh, an installation piece um, about her uh, about her family dynamic. Um, so there's a lot that you can do. There's a lot of different uh, materials that you have access to, natural materials, uh, to create uh, a variety of different type of work. Something to also consider is the actual process. Um, you know, oftentimes students experiment um, and troubleshoot uh, a lot of ideas in their sketchbook. That's why a lot of schools really prioritize having a sketchbook. Um, they're a great way for you to ha uh, hash out some ideas. Um, so for example, uh, this is um, a piece that a student of mine, uh, Tony Bernardo did. Um, the, the field box creates, creates an environment that allows senses to take a bigger role when detecting and interpreting um, unknown entities. The interior of the box is filled with small objects containing different textures and sounds. Um, it's meant to be an interactive piece. The viewer puts their hands in and comes up in, in, uh, with their own interpretation of the experience. Afterwards, the viewer is asked to draw what they believe they just felt. Um, Tony's primary goal was to compare and contrast the varying interpretations. He viewed the work as a metaphor for um, uh, for more open-minded people um, who have perceived or, or different, um, excuse me, um, perceived as different due to their race, religion, um, or sexual orientation. Uh, it was also a personal piece relating to Tony's desire for his parents to relinquish their preconceived notions regarding uh, his own sexual orientation. I also always tell students not um, don't be afraid to get really personal in their work. Um, you know, what's your what's your story? Tell us about your um, about your life, about your interests. What's what what is your what is your portfolio um, saying about you? Um, most schools uh, use Slide Room. Um, it's helpful to utilize the notes. So just you know, take a minute and just write a paragraph about what the what each piece um, is trying to say. Um, this student in particular wrote a lot about her work. Um, she is a second generation American born into a family of refugees and felt it was her obligation to record and preserve the history of uh, the Jewish pe people, focusing sp uh, particularly on um, Holocaust remem rem remembrance and anti-Semitism. Um, she wants to be able to give back to her community um, and wants to encourage students to stand up for what they believe in. It's also okay to create a series of your works or to explore a theme. 
So you can try focusing on one idea or subject matter and explore it more deeply from many different perspectives. So thinking about how many different ways that idea or theme can be expressed. You can make connections between pieces and think about how they can work together as a larger body of work, sort of like you would see in a gallery. So for example, this student's work focuses on sociological and cultural issues. This is a series that she created um, because she wanted to show how easily overlooked a person suffering from mental illness feels. So as you can see, this doesn't flat out necessarily say mental illness in the representation, but the student took the opportunity to dive deeper into what some of that concept means um, and explore this in that note section of slide room that Claudia was just talking about. So she chose, the student in this case, chose shoes because it's a common item that we're all using in everyday life, right? We all have at least one pair of shoes that we're, we're wearing every day. Probably most of us have more than a couple pairs that we are trying to often decide between. Um, but then she used these shoes to represent mental illnesses. So in these examples, one represents addiction, one represents manic depression, and so forth. Through this process, the student researched patient statements and stories and use those stories to help influence the type of work that you're seeing, um, the elements that she's using in these shoes. The student felt it was important to help connect with the community through the artwork. So it's something, again, that was personal to her that she used to build a connection with her audience. So certainly don't be afraid to have fun with your portfolio. Um, you know, again, as Cress mentioned earlier, portfolio is something that all art schools are going to ask you for. All art schools are going to have different requirements. And unfortunately, it can be a little bit stressful to figure out what to put in there. But um, being mindful of those different requirements that schools will have, you know, allow yourself some freedom to enjoy what it is you're doing. You're applying to art schools because you enjoy art. Um, you want to create things. That voice should come through within that portfolio. So select pieces of your work that showcase what your abilities are, as well as what your perspectives are. How you see the world around you is really, really important. And it is your individual voice that matters, that counts. So there's no right way to build a portfolio. There's no magic formula of types of pieces to include in some instances. Experiment, try new things make things that you love, and that will come through. That will show in the pieces that you're creating. Um, so for example, with the pieces that you're seeing here, this student was interested in illustration and animation, and the works follow a loose and simple style, with color being an important part of the elements of these compositions. Um, the students strive to keep messaging purposeful, um, but purposefully vague, so to not, have a flat out or to allow the audience to interpret what it is they're seeing within the image um, to more further engage the viewer. So it's not something that you can see that piece on the right, um, that little mask, that face is saying why, um, but that doesn't necessarily illustrate a specific point. It's not accompanying a specific story, um, but it's really to engage the viewer, get them to think about what's going on there or to create their own story around this. So the work is connected not by a singular theme, but by a shared, more whimsical and playful quality. The portfolio for this student in its entirety showed him experimenting, pushing himself, trying new things, and essentially being engaged as an artist. So again, we really wanna see what you can do. In the case of CCA specifically, we're really just asking to see what you can do and what you can do well. Um, to go back to what Chris said in the beginning, each school might have different requirements or different priorities that they're looking for in a portfolio. With a school like CCA, because we don't have specific requirements, it gives you that opportunity to really highlight what your strengths are. Um, and again, as Claudia mentioned, really showing your voice, really illustrating your story. So for another couple of examples, um, there was a student local to us from Oakland, California, who really struggled to define her identity. Um, when she came out, she struggled and rejected the idea of her place within the LGBTQ community 
and her work sort of reflects that experience, reflects that struggle. Um, and then there was another student, Yaksin, who um, focused more on architectural kinds of works. So that portfolio contained more models and rendering, but because he's also a skilled visual artist, he chose to include some of that type of work in his portfolio as well. He makes drawings and paintings of hybrid structures that reference multiple forms of architecture from all over the world. And he's also very passionate about the environment and sustainability and how these things relate to future architectural practices. So getting feedback can be incredibly helpful. Um, it's good to start early, um, getting um, advice from teachers, uh, other artists, anyone who you know who maybe has attended art school or has some kind of arts background. Uh, visual arts is really no different than any other uh, profession. Um, it's really helpful to get outside in opinions to improve. Um, so take the initiative uh, to go through a portfolio review, to have a critique from an art teacher or somebody who, whose opinion you uh, trust or who um, that can be really helpful. Um, critique can uh, sometimes be rough, um, but it's a part of the practice and part of the process. So um, get, get that exposure, um, learn how to articulate your ideas. It's really an important skill that you'll use day in and day out um, in art school. Um, so start that practice today as much as possible. Um, you can also uh, start getting feedback from art schools now uh, while you are uh, in Mexico um, by reaching out to uh, schools that are part of the Association of Independent Colleges of Art and Design. So ACAD, um, you can see their general website below, is uh, a group of uh, approximately 60 art schools in the United States. They're all art schools um, that are nonprofit independent art colleges. Um, they're all schools that require portfolio for admission. And if you visit their website, uh, you can be directed to a portal that will allow you to do a review. And the, you can see the link below where it says reviews. Uh, students can upload work to the ACAD slide room page and select colleges that they think they might be interested in. And those schools will then review your work and provide feedback. So it's a great resource to start getting um, some uh, uh, critique from the schools that you're interested in. Uh, you can also um, sign up to be on mailing lists uh, with those schools from there as well. So it's an excellent resource. ACAD can also direct you to um, pre-college programs, which I'll talk about um, further along. So um, in terms of presentation, this is when you've, uh, you're getting close to submitting your portfolio for admission. You really want to start thinking about um, your presentation um, and you want to set the tone um, to be taken seriously by the schools that you're most interested in. So uh, it, it's as simple as uh, how you photograph your work, make sure that it's clean, um, well lit, unobscured, properly oriented, so make sure that everything um, is lined up. Um, present your work in the best possible way. Um, you know, poor lighting, uh, a fuzzy image, all of these things can uh, really um, uh, decrease the um, impact of your overall presentation. So make sure you have um, no uh, smudges or out of focus images. Um, also think about your artwork all together as a body. Um, think about how the images flow from one slide to the next. Think about how you might want to organize the pieces um, in a way that makes sense. So if you have a series just, you know, as simple as like grouping those pieces together, or perhaps you have observational work uh, grouping those um, images together and so on. Uh, this example here, uh, Davian Fel uh, Farrell was uh, pre-college art student uh, in our architecture program. And um, these uh, pieces were um, inspired by a shoe that he cut in half and he used the lines from the interior stitching 
of a shoe as the inspiration for this architectural uh, space. So in terms of the presentation, what makes this an effective presentation is that it's photographed from multiple angles. Um, so it allows the viewer to understand how this model works in a three-dimensional space. And this is especially important given the context of the shoe stitching. Um, so, uh, and, and, um, so that you could, the viewer can see all angles. Um, also, it um, is done on a simple white backdrop, which um, shows off uh, the piece. And I mentioned pre-college a couple of times. <laughs> so um, consider pre-college. So Davian's work um, from that last image, he was a participant in our summer pre-college program. Pre-college programs um, are summer programs offered for high school students, and it provides an opportunity for students to try out art school. Um, they tend to run between four and six weeks long. Students live in residence halls and uh, majors. So you get to really dive in deep to a particular program. Uh, and it's really a great opportunity for portfolio development. Uh, you basically are in class all day, five days a week, um, without the distractions of your other um, academic coursework. So it's a time to really focus on art making. And the work that comes out of those programs tends to be quite strong and uh, can really be beneficial in terms uh, of building up a nice solid body of work that you can then include in a college portfolio. And going back to um, ACAD, which I referenced a couple of slides before, at the bottom there, ACAD will have a listing of all of the summer programs available through the ACAD um, schools. Yeah, and just to reinforce that point, if you're debating about going to art school, um, or you can't decide between art school or more traditional kind of college or university, a pre-college program is a really great opportunity to sort of test the waters um, and see what it's like to be in an art school. Um, it's a lot easier to do that for four weeks during the summer than to make a full semester, a full year commitment to test something out. So not only does it help you build a portfolio or get experience in a program that you might be interested in, but on a more practical level, it can help you determine if art school is right for you. So as we've discussed, um, every school is a little bit different. Um, that is why it's important to take a look at application requirements and portfolio requirements for each school. Since the three of us work at California College of the Arts, we're gonna take a little bit of time just to give you more information about our college. And this will give you an opportunity to um, take some notes, learn a little bit more about us, and then give you a starting point to start to compare other art schools um, to one another. So CCA, California College of the Arts, has been around for quite some time. We were founded in 1907 during the arts and crafts movement. Our original campus is in Oakland, but we have since expanded to California. And actually by fall 2022, we will be one campus just in San Francisco. So on this map here, you can see on the very top, sort of the part of the San Francisco skyline. So that's downtown. We're maybe about a mile or two, 20, 30 minute walk from that area where you see the note that says expanded campus. That is where our current San Francisco campus is housed. Um, the new buildings area is where um, the Oakland studio spaces are going to be recreated. So we're going to be in this one city block here in the design district of San Francisco. And we actually have a new dorm uh, where you see it says new student housing that will be opening this fall. Um, to be able to house our first and second year students. So it is actually required at CCA for the first two years that students live on campus. These are some um, images, some renderings of what some of the new studio spaces are going to look like um, when they're completed in the next couple of years. So again, a lot of gallery spaces, um, a lot of maker spaces, a lot of natural light, open light meeting spaces for students. So we actually are making a shift to a much more residential type of campus, even here within the city itself. Um, and as I mentioned, as you saw in that larger overhead shot, 188 Hooper is the new residence hall that's opening this fall. Um, you 
students will literally be right across the street from school. They can roll out of bed and come to class, which will certainly make lives a little bit easier across the board. It's also going to be home to the largest restaurant space in the city of San Francisco. So our students will be lucky to have um, a pretty good dining option right there on the first floor. So the Bay Area is definitely a hub for art and design, but it also has a long history of being at the forefront of a lot of cultural, environmental, political, and social, social change. Um, for example, a lot of radical social activism and civic engagement uh, in the 1960s. Um, today, a lot of major human rights movements like Black Lives Matter um, happen here in the Bay Area. Um, coming from Miami, you know, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for um, me to see a lot of um, social change happening, but moving to the Bay Area, it really opened my world um, and really helped educate me on things that uh, various communities were experiencing. Um, so not only uh, is the Bay Area a hub for uh, design, but also there's a lot of beautiful greenery, a lot of things to see, a lot of um, local parks um, and different events. A lot of students hang out in, in Dolores Park, it's pretty famous, or they'll go across the Golden Gate Bridge to um, Muir Woods. Um, there are different um, festivals that happen like Outside Lands, probably heard of it. Um, and then a couple hours away, we have Big Sur, Yosemite National Park, Point Reyes. So there's a lot to see and do. So our students tend to stay pretty active. So, I mean, the food here is probably not as good as it is in Mexico City, but um, we do have a pretty uh, diverse um, food population here in San Francisco. Uh, we have a lot of different events like First Friday, um, um, excuse me, um, and different events that cater to the arts um, in the area, specifically in the Mission District. Uh, it's pretty iconic. Um, we have events where, you know, food trucks from across the Bay come to different parts of the Bay uh, for people around in different communities to come and eat and indulge. Yeah, we're very lucky with our area because we have access to so many different things. So as Claudia has been mentioning, um, cuisine from all over the world, but also music venues, gallery spaces, public parks, beaches, you can go surfing, you could go paddle boarding. The water is a little bit cold, so I wouldn't necessarily say you can jump in and swim around unless you kind of build up a little bit of a thicker skin, but you can go hiking. Um, there are sporting events that take place. If you're into football, basketball, baseball, we have professional sports teams that are um, located here in San Francisco and across the Bay in Oakland. Um, there are gallery spaces and art spaces. Some of the best museums in the world, SFMOMA, the De Young Museum, also across the bridge we have the um, Oakland Museum of California. Um, a lot of these uh, pl pl uh, spaces are also great opportunities for students to intern and work at. We have professors that work in these spaces, so there's a lot to see and a lot to do. Great, so when exploring uh, art school options in the United States. Um, there are kind of two different um, models that um, exist. Uh, one model is the art school where you uh, apply to a particular major at the school and your first day um, on campus, you start in that major um, at, and you are very focused on that program for the full four years. The other model um, is a model where uh, you don't necessarily need to know your major your first year, but in your first year, all students, regardless of the program that they intend to pursue, will do a foundation program, which um, sort of is sort of modeled like a general education experience in the fine arts. Um, so at CCA, we have a we follow that model where we have a first year program. Our first year program um, is uh, a program that's designed um, to uh, give you exposure um, to working with different materials. It's about skill building. It's about critical thinking and building craftsmanship. Um, it's also about getting more exposure to critique and communication. 
Um, and so the idea of the first year program is that it lays a foundation for all of our students and brings them to, this, uh, to a level playing field before they enter their major in their second year. So um, all first year students do a drawing class, 2D, 3D, and a 4D class. Um, and at the end of the year, they do a uh, first year portfolio re review, which is a capstone um, experience that helps um, build professional skill set and prepare them for their uh, entry into their major. Um, you can also see um, additional course requirements within the humanities. So all of the schools um, that um, I mentioned earlier that are part of that uh, ACAD group um, will also require academic coursework. And um, you will see that um, in the first year, students begin in their academic coursework and the academic coursework continues all four years. For the most part, students who attend art school in the United States through one of those ACAD accredited institutions can expect to spend approximately 60% of their coursework in the studio and approximately 40% in, uh, in the academic classroom. So that students graduate um, well-rounded um, both in the studio um, and with academic um, critical thinking skills. So upon completion of the first year program, students will enter into uh, one of our 21 undergraduate uh, programs. And our programs um, are uh, all four year degrees with the exception of architecture, which is a five year bachelor of architecture. So um, our, uh, our studio culture um, supports exploration in these programs. So um, even though a student may choose um, a major, for example, in animation, there's still um, flexibility for that student to take coursework outside of their program. Um, at, students are allotted uh, elective coursework that allows them to kind of craft the sort of educational experience that they're looking for. Uh, CCA also offers um, uh, four um, STEM designated degrees, um, three at the undergraduate level. And the STEM designated degrees are uh, for students who um, complete one of these programs. They may uh, qualify for um, uh, OPT, occupational practical training, and extend their visa um, for an additional 24 months after they graduate to work in one of these fields. So animation, interaction design, and architecture are all um, programs that CCA offers uh, STEM designated degrees. Uh, if you're looking at other uh, art schools in the United States, that might be a consideration to ask those individual schools which uh, programs they offer STEM designated degrees because it does really um, provide a valuable opportunity for students to uh, finish their degree and then get professional practice in that program in, in the city or uh, location where they've uh, earn their education and made some really important connections. So um, oftentimes that can lend itself to students finding work right after they graduate because they've made those important connections in the program. So um, we really want our students to be able to launch their practice, to become practicing professional artists, designers, architects, whatever their focus is. And that's something, again, that you'll want to make sure you're looking at um, what current students are doing or what alumni are doing in the various schools that you might be, um, that you might be taking a look at. So, um, for example, one of our students, Maria, um, is an architecture student. She was drawn to CCA because of this interdisciplinary approach that we have that Crest touched upon. So even though she's in architecture, she's been able to take courses in ceramics, play around with the wood shop, and bring those things into her practice as well. These are samples um, from some of her work, which focuses a lot on the intersection of social equity and ecology. She participated in the Resilient by Design Bay Area Challenge on a team with other CCA students. And they created um, an agrarian village, which was an innovative urban design. 
that tackled ecological, urban, and social issues with a three-level space that could facilitate agricultural production, greenhouse spaces, and co-housing spaces. So the idea was within this structure, different levels would serve different functions. Um, there was also um, work done on um, biodiversity. Um, the image on the right dealt with a project um, that would take place in the Louisiana Delta to create more resilient um, housing and opportunities for people to be able to develop um, habitats that could either be submerged in the water or float on the water. So as climate change becomes a, a pretty larger impact on our global society, um, our students, particularly those that participated in this program, um, tackled issues that will be faced by um, by people across the world. So how climate change will affect sea level raise uh, or sea level rising, and then how we might be able to deal with that um, or create housing or habitats that will be able to deal with that. And I'll just just to add about Maria, she was a, a recent graduate of the architecture program, and. Uh, the, the program is an exceptionally strong architecture program, five-year Bachelor of Architecture. Um, Maria uh, chose to um, not go straight into the field and instead uh, is now in a graduate uh, landscape architecture program at Harvard. So there is a high rate of success from uh, out of that program, whether it's students pursuing um, graduate program or looking to go right into the profession uh, post five-year Bachelor of Architecture degree. And again, because we want you to launch your practice, um, here at CCA, we do have a very active career development department that is available to you pretty much from the minute you step foot on campus as a student um, to the time you decide you don't want to work anymore. So has an alumni there a resource you always have access to? Um, they can help with anything from writing a resume, to polishing a cover letter, practicing interview skills. They help students connect with over 600 internships a year, as well as bring over 200 companies a year to campus. So um, it's a really great department on campus to help our students take that next step. And that's something else you'll want to make sure that you're looking at, at the other schools that you might be comparing, um, what type of career development or um, career resources they have for their current students and also for their alumni. Um, we have been ranked the number one best value art school in the US uh, by an independent company called Payscale. So that means the uh, amount of resources you're putting into your education and what you stand to make on the back end of that. We're very proud of that statistic because um, Payscale, as I said, is an independent company. So it's not someone we advertise with or anything like that. It's a statistic they determine through their own research. Um, also, as you can see, a majority of our alumni are employed within a year after graduation. Um, and a majority of our alumni across the board, almost 80% are indicating to CCA that they're working in fields that are related to the education that they've received at CCA. So again, by being mindful of the kinds of jobs students are getting or alumni are getting from various art schools can also help you make your decision. These are just some of the companies that our students have interned at over the past um, year or so. And some of these places are literally right across the street from us. So Adobe actually just opened um, some office and studio spaces that are next to the new dorm that is opening this fall. So we can literally reach out and touch Adobe. Um, Google is obviously in the area as well as Facebook, Apple, um, NASA. NASA. Uh, Bunch of these companies are in our backyard. Levi's is here, um, but students are interning for companies across the United States. Yeah, and I'll just add, you know, in, um, earlier we touched upon, uh, on um, how the Bay Area has been long been this hub for arts and culture, but in more uh, recent times um, in our lifetimes, it really has been kind of the birthplace of modern technology. So um, 
it does provide a lot of opportunity for our students um, to uh, have access to faculty who work for those companies in in a design um, uh, field. Um, it has it provides access for uh, internships and job opportunities. So um, it's not to be overlooked the um, the the fact that we are at the epicenter of um, of the Silicon Valley and uh, where basically uh, modern technology um, was born. Um, so um, looking ahead to admissions requirements, um, and these you'll find to be fairly similar across the board for most art schools. Um, uh, we look for an application, essay, a letter of recommendation, transcript, uh, proof of English proficiency, and those, the proof of English proficiency for the art schools tends to be, um, in, uh, the requirements tend to fall in the same range in terms of test scores. Um, and then the portfolio. Most art schools, um, especially the ones that you'll find on that, uh, belonging to the ACAD organization, will use Slide Room as the uh, platform for submitting your portfolio online. The English requirements for CCA, you can see them here. And again, they tend to be pretty standard across the board for art schools. And then uh, financial aid. Our financial aid for international students, uh, we do offer merit scholarship for students. Our merit scholarship is based on your uh, portfolio and your academic record. So um, kind of circling back to the very beginning of the presentation, this is where the portfolio um, really comes into play. So when you're looking at art schools, um, really uh, uh, thinking about uh, modeling uh, and tailoring your portfolio for each individual institution that you uh, apply to can be very impactful. Really resist the temptation to submit the same portfolio to every single school because most schools will base their uh, scholarship off of that portfolio and you want to make sure that you're uh, providing the uh, type of uh, portfolio that that individual institution is looking for. So um, CCA, um, our merit scholarship ranges up to $22,000 per year and it's renewable. So a student would receive that scholarship every year that they attended the school. We also have on-campus jobs uh, for international students. So that could be um, working in the library, giving campus tours, um, uh, assisting in an administrative office, um, but students can earn um, a small, uh, work study salary working on campus. So that is the end of our presentation. Um, we can now open it up for questions. I see we don't have any questions yet, but now is the moment. If you have questions, um, please feel free to, um, to chat, uh, message them at the bottom of your screen and we can answer them. Um, you can also see our website there, cca.edu. Um, on our website, you can access all of our emails. Um, we're always happy to do um, in-person, uh, um, excuse me, we're always happy to do Skype um, meetings. If you want to have a face-to-face -face meeting one-on-one, um, -on -one, we can do that. Uh, additionally, I will be in Mexico City um, mid-March, and I'm happy to meet face-to-face -face if uh, you would like to arrange a time to meet, to do a portfolio review, um, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, and our uh, email address um, is internationaladmissions at cca.edu, that's our general um, email address, so you can also reach us there. Thank you so much. I think we have one question um, from uh, Michela, and she's asking, um, what is the standard tuition per year and semester? So, um, the cost of tuition for one year is about 
$52,000. Um, if you hold on one second, I will share the page on our website. Thank you. So if you can see the screen now, um, for CCA for undergraduate, you'll uh, be able to kind of take a look. Uh, first year student um, who's living on campus, everything included, so housing, um, transportation, book supplies, food, things of that nature. It's estimated to be about $76,000 for one year. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, that is pretty comparable to a lot of the other ACAB schools that we were talking about earlier. So those private nonprofit schools of art and design, um, our tuitions are all roughly around the same amount, but that is a very good question and definitely something that you'll want to look into as well. And keep in mind the $76,000 per year, um, the merit scholarships that we offer at CCA um, are uh, quite generous for students who have um, put together a thoughtful portfolio and have done well academically. Again, those scholarships uh, range up to $22,000 per year uh, and, and you would receive it um, all four, or if you did architecture, five years that you attended the school. Um, there's a question if I will only be visiting Mexico City in March. Unfortunately, um, in March, I will only be in Mexico City. Um, in the fall, I will um, be traveling to other cities in Mexico. Um, and um, we always have our travel um, calendars online where you can see the cities that we'll be visiting in the fall. Uh, so um, definitely check back um, then or feel free to email me and I can let you know uh, what cities I'll be visiting. Um, but again, the, the offer um, it always stands for a um, Skype one-on-one um, -on -one meeting if you'd like to arrange that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I don't think we don't have um, any other questions. For those of you who um, join us later, we are recording this session so you can um, access and, and watch the whole session later. Um, make sure to contact um, Chris or Claudia or Mike if you have any other questions or if you uh, would like to meet with Chris uh, if you are in Mexico City when she is in, when she's visiting us uh, in March. Um, is there anything else you will want uh, to add before we finish? Um, there was just a question about um, test scores. Um, mm -hmm. CCA is test optional. That is also something important to check between your schools. Um, test optional means we do not require SAT or ACT scores. If you take the SAT or the ACT, we encourage you to submit those. We will, they will never hurt your chance for admission. In fact, sometimes we can use your ACT or SAT score to waive your proof of English proficiency or to place you in a writing class in your first year. So we don't have a writing placement exam. Um, necessarily that you would take during orientation, but you would be placed based on the results of your ACT or SAT. So again, not required, but if you take them, please do feel free to submit them. It will never hurt you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, one more question. Perfect. Uh, Michelle is asking, are tuition figures given also for international student or is that just for U.S. students? Um, because we are a private school, those numbers are the same for everybody. So whether you live in Mexico or live in California or live in Russia, um, those numbers are the same for everyone. 
Uh, sometimes we do have students from Mexico who have dual citizenship, and if you do, we would of course encourage you to apply for financial aid by submitting your um, FAFSA, um, and you would be eligible for additional uh, funding through the federal government um, um, if you uh, are a U.S. citizen. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining, joining us today in this webinar. Thank you so much, California College of the Arts, for being willing to give this um, online session for our advices. Um, and please contact them if you have any uh, further questions about uh, your portfolios or the um, admission process to um, California College of the Arts. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. See ya. Bye.